the last thing that needs setting before we can actually press play and check out our simulation is the collider object, which is the, sk the underlying skin. If you select the cloth object and then shift select the skin object, you can create a collision using the collide mesh uh, option. We'll have a look at all of the options now. If we actually just select the cloth, open up the selection menu and select the cloth attributes, here are all of the values that, uh, that we can tune. So we can start to play around with, uh, with a lot of these values here and start to kind of do more interesting things. If I press play right now, the playback is going to be actually pretty slow. So I think what I'll do is try and tune it very relatively close to some settings that I know will work for this, uh, this particular character. So I like the density around the initial values that we'd set. Uh, the stretch stiffness, though, I'm going to raise that a little bit. I'll go with, and the shear stiffness, I'm going to keep that around 0.015. I'm going to again. So we're using the base values that we've uh, worked with, uh, deriving them from the uh, the calculator, and then we're just working with values outside of that. So you still have to go in and find values to your liking that, that actually work. As far as the stretch damping, I'm going to maybe lower, maybe increase the stretch a little bit. The shear damping, I'm going to bring that down a notch, or actually increase the... Uh, and finally the bend damping will something like that. Now as far as our gravity goes, we are going to increase the strength of gravity. And for damping, let's just use a very little bit of damping there. Alright, let's see what these settings give us. Um, on the collision damping, let's go with something like that. Just what the damping is actually doing for you here is on the collision, the damping just occurs when the geometry penetrates the uh, collider. So when the cloth actually does penetrate, it slows down very quickly. Or rather, when it reaches the value set in the internal envelope. So this is a value that's measured from the moment the cloth penetrates the skin. It then starts to slow down the cloth penetration and will actually repel it outside towards the, uh, the external envelope. We don't want any bounce of the fabric and we obviously are going to be able to tune friction if we want the cloth to have a little bit of grab on the character as well. Which can obviously be very useful if we want sort of sweat or something like that to cause like a stickiness to the, uh, to the character. There's also a new stickiness attribute in version 7 that kind of does a better job than the friction attribute. I find that the stickiness is just a little bit faster. But we want to get a sense of the cloth moving uh, at the appropriate uh, rate. So I'm just going to come in here and close this down and let's see how this works. Uh, if I find that the Camtasia is getting a little bit too uh, competitive with the resources for XSI here, what I'll do is just cache the files. In fact, this is actually very slow right now, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to stop this. The cache when Camtasia is running, uh, or the, the playback is actually quite fast, is uh, I'm actually just going to cache a file. I'll pop out and pop back in once the caches are done. We'll actually just compare caches, which is a good way to demonstrate the feature as well. Uh, so we kind of work around this Camtasia issue. So as far as my caches go, uh, I'll go to my training project folder and I'll make my own SciFlex cache folder. So in the SciFlex folder uh, I'm going to call the cache, uh, let's call this cloth, first cloth test.
Okay, I just want the cloth to drape over, say, uh, 150 frames, so this doesn't take forever. And we'll get a pretty good idea if we need to tune some of these values. So I'll exit out, come back in, and we'll show you what the cache has recorded.